a look at the various different choices that we have, because there are seven different ones. You can access them by pressing this small button here and rotating this dial either way. So let's take a look at the various different modes available to us on the Nikon D7000. Now S stands for single, which means in this mode, when you press the shutter release button, it will take one picture. Um, it doesn't matter how long you press and hold that shutter button down, it's still only going to take one picture. Now, I'm going to use this setting most of the times, unless, for some reason, I'm shooting something fast, like wildlife or sports or the dog in the backyard, you know, something like that. I'm going to use the S or single setting for the majority of my shooting. Clicking to CL, which is the next setting, means continuous low. Pressing the shutter button will take anywhere from one to five photos in a row, depending on the subject, the lighting, and other conditions. Now, you can pre-select the number of shots in a menu located at the D6 menu, which we'll go over in a few moments. The D6 menu is located in the shooting display menu. Using the multi-selector, you can choose which settings you want. If you want the maximum, choose 5 and press the OK button located in the middle of the multi-selector. Uh, moving on to CH, well, this means continuous high speed. Now, the D7000 can take a maximum of 6 frames per second, which is amazing for a camera at this level. And as fact, as you can see, it'll shoot more than the six if you keep pressing it. Now, I'm definitely going to use this when I'm shooting sports and wildlife, the dog in the backyard, the kids in the backyard, you know, that sort of thing. Now, remember, you'll only get six frames per second under the following conditions. First, your memory card must be a high quality memory card and a high speed memory card. I'll talk more about memory cards later in this DVD. Second, you need to be shooting at a relatively fast shutter speed, perhaps 1 25th of a second or even faster. Third, so your focus needs to be pretty steady. In other words, locked on one subject. More about this later on. When all those conditions meet, you can expect to shoot at 6 frames per second, which is pretty cool. Q stands for quiet shutter. When you press the shutter button in this mode, it will take just one image, but it will do it as quietly as it's possible. In fact, what it does is let the mirror remain in the up position after taking the picture until you release the shutter button like this. When are you going to use this drive mode? Well, you're going to find yourself in situations where you have to be as quiet as possible. Perhaps it's a board meeting, maybe a funeral, maybe even a wedding. Perhaps you're taking pictures of a newborn baby, even sometimes when you're shooting wildlife close up. Give it a try and see how much quieter the shot is. Now, moving to the small stopwatch, this is called the self-timer mode. Now, it's one of my favorite modes because it lets me take a picture without touching the camera. It can be used to get you in the picture, like this, but more likely you're going to use it to take low light and low speed images, when even pressing the shutter button lightly will make for a blurry picture. Now, you can determine how long the delay will be by going into menu C3. The C menu in the custom settings main menu allows you considerable control of the self timer. First, you can select how long the delay will be between pressing the button and the picture being taken. So go to menu C3, self timer, and right click to get into the settings. Right clicking again, will allow you to select from 2 seconds, 
5 seconds, 10 seconds, or 20 seconds. I'm going to recommend 2 seconds. When you have the camera on a tripod or other steady surface, when you want to take a slow speed picture, perhaps like these that I took at night. Now 10 seconds, well, that's enough time to get in the picture yourself. Once again, you're going to have the camera on a tripod. You're going to set the delay in the menu system to 10 seconds. Then you'll compose your shot, press the shutter button, and you'll move into your position in the scene. There are two other settings, as I said. Now, I think that they can be used in this mode too, but five seconds is just too long when I'm just trying to reduce camera shake. And believe it or not, 20 seconds is so long for people to pose in a picture. Try these settings. It'll make a difference in getting low light shots. And you can have some fun getting into your own pictures. Going back to the self-timer menu, you can also ask the camera to take up to nine different photos using the multi-selector to change the settings like I'm doing now. Lastly, the camera will allow you to choose at what interval these shots will be taken. So you can use this to capture different looks in a family portrait. Experiment with this and select your favorites. One thing to note, when you press the shutter button in this mode, the auto-focused assist light will turn on. This next drive mode setting is this little remote control. You can purchase an inexpensive remote control for your camera from Nikon. It's called the ML L3 and it's typically priced under $30. Now with this remote, you can trigger the shutter from a distance of up to 5 meters or 16 feet. To look at the options you have with this remote, go to the shooting menu. It's this little camera here. Then scroll down to the remote control mode by right clicking. You can select from three options. A two second delay, which means the shutter fires two seconds after you press the remote. Quick response remote, which means the shutter fires immediately. And lastly, the remote mirror up. In this mode, the first time you press the remote, the mirror goes up. The second time, the shutter fires. This is another method of reducing camera shake. Now, I leave mine at instant, as I think it offers me what I want in a remote trigger most of the time. This accessory is well worth the cost. You'll use it countless times in your photography. I'm sure I use it each and every week. One final drive mode is the M-Up mode, or the Mirror Up mode. When you're using this mode, you'll compose your shot and focus. Then, Press the shutter release button once, which will raise the mirror. When you press it a second time, the shutter will fire, taking a picture. Now a couple of warnings on this mode. You need to compose your shot before pressing the shutter button, because the first time you press it, you can't see anything in the viewfinder, or on the LCD at the back. If you're worried about camera shake, this is the mode to use. I'll say I rarely ever use this mode. I think the remote or self timer is fine to minimize camera shake. But if it's a super long exposure where even the little bit of shake will cause a problem, go to mirror up. 